As I walked along the secluded trail, I couldn't help but remember a piece of advice my old science teacher, Mr. Hilberg, told us. Knowledge is like a flashlight in a dark room. It helps you see where you're going. Little did he know how relevant that would be for me today. My name is Seth Baxter, and this story began as a simple hiking trip with my friends. Just a way to get away from the bustle of city life and reconnect with nature in the Alaskan wilderness. A much-needed escape for all of us, including my buddy Tim Waters and his cousin Laura Thompson. Tim had always been quite the prankster among us. His jokes were mostly innocent fun, but they never failed to provoke laughter. Laura, on the other hand, was someone who valued wit over physical comedy. Her jokes were often sharp and smart, the kind that would make you think before laughing. We all shared an understanding that we could call for help if we ever needed it, but we were too wrapped up in the excitement of our adventure to worry about anything going wrong. As we trekked farther into the dense forest, we saw traces of something out of place, odd marks on tree trunks and an unusual stench lingering in the air. It became harder for me to ignore these peculiarities as time went on. The smell intensified when I noticed an odd dragging pattern on the ground. Something had clearly moved through the area with heavy force. I tried to keep these observations from overpowering my thoughts by focusing on Tim and Laura. They bantered back and forth about which bear species was smarter, grizzly or black bears, when suddenly Tim landed face first in a pile of leaves, tripping over an exposed root. Laura chuckled at him and said, Well, now we know who's not as smart as a bear. We all laughed heartily at this remark until a gut-wrenching scream ripped through the stillness of the forest. Help! Somebody, please help me! The desperation in the voice sent chills down our backs. Spurred into action, Tim, Laura, and I sprinted towards the source of that agonizing scream. We came upon a brutal scene. A young woman with her clothes torn, multiple wounds across her body, and her arm twisted in an unnatural position. Even more shocking was her attacker, a creature I couldn't quite place in any existing folklore, uncannily humanoid but with grotesque features. The nightmare before us could not have been human. At least four meters tall and coated in thick, coarse hair, the monster stood hunched over the helpless woman, its elongated arms terminated in razor-sharp talons, which it used to attack and maul her unmoving form with evident pleasure. Disregarding any sense of reason or self-preservation, we launched ourselves at the monstrous being, Tim bravely swung a nearby branch at its head while Laura took out her pocket knife and attempted to stab its leg. Despite the fear coursing through my veins, I knew running away meant certain death for this woman. Suddenly aware of our presence but seemingly unfazed by our attacks, the mysterious creature locked its bloodshot eyes onto mine as if daring me to challenge it further. The grotesque sight was beyond anything I could ever imagine. Was this just some sick joke by Tim? Horror began to twist into rage. What were we dealing with? Why had this thing chosen today to attack? As we struggled to fight off the abomination before us, it quickly became apparent that our efforts were futile. The monster effortlessly swatted Tim aside, who fell unconscious from the force of the blow. Laura continued to slash at its legs with her pocket knife, barely scratching its thick hide. No words could describe the terror coursing through my body or the fury I felt as I tried to save the woman before me. But as much as my instincts told me to keep fighting, I knew it was a losing battle. Realizing that we needed help, I pulled out my phone and dialed 911. My voice wavered as I frantically relayed our situation to the operator. When she asked for our location, I glanced around and realized that we had wandered far deeper into the forest than anticipated during our hike. Despite not knowing exactly where we were, I described our surroundings as best as I could. The operator assured me that help was on its way, if only we could hold on a little longer. Hearing sirens in the distance gave us a sliver of hope. We just needed to buy some time. Laura continued to distract the creature while I searched for something else to use against it. Spotting a sizable rock nearby, I scooped it up and aimed it at the monster's head. The rock connected with an audible thud, momentarily stunning the creature. This sudden pause in its movement granted us precious time for first responders to arrive on the scene. It wasn't long before they burst into the clearing with guns drawn and shouting commands. Their firepower appeared more useful against this monstrous attacker than our feeble attempts with a knife and makeshift weapons. Amidst all this chaos, however, one thing became evident. 
their bullets barely seemed to phase the beast. Growing more desperate in their efforts to protect us and subdue this seemingly invulnerable enemy, they turned their attention towards capturing it instead. A net was launched in an attempt to ensnare the creature, but it easily ripped itself free, leaving us at a loss for what to do next. In a last-ditch effort before it tried to escape, one of the officers uncovered a canister of pepper spray and aimed it directly into the creature's face. To our amazement, this proved effective. The monster howled in pain and began to retreat, quickly disappearing into the dense foliage. As we remained rooted in place, trying to process what had just occurred, we were escorted out of the forest by the first responders. Ambulances had arrived on site, and Tim was whisked away for medical treatment immediately. Laura and I checked in with them as well, but insisted that our main priority was ensuring the young woman received help as soon as possible. In the days that followed, we couldn't shake the dreadful events from our minds. Numerous questions continued to plague us. What sort of twisted creature had brought such carnage and suffering upon an innocent person? And worse yet, how had it managed to remain undiscovered until now? We spent countless hours poring over articles online, searching for any plausible explanation as to what manner of beast could have been responsible for this brutal attack. But despite our efforts, we drew a blank every time. No creature from existing folklore matched the monstrous being we'd encountered in that forest. The authorities would later classify this incident as an unexplained event involving an unknown animal. They assured us they'd do everything in their power to locate and capture the creature, but warned that surviving in this world meant coexisting alongside creatures most of us couldn't even fathom. The woman who had been attacked perished from her wounds shortly after she was brought to safety. Tim miraculously recovered under medical care, thanks in part to his strong determination. But all three of us knew that things would never be the same. Every time we step back out into the wild, we'll be reminded of what lurks beyond the edge of the familiar, where danger might rear its grotesque features and strike fear into all who confront it. Somewhere deep in that forest, a nightmarish creature could still roam. We emerge from the encounter lucky to be alive, but how many others may not have been so fortunate? I was sitting on the porch of my cabin, sipping my morning cup of coffee. I always found solace in the Alaskan wilderness, away from the hustle and bustle of city life. That morning was no different. It was serene and calm, with only the sound of chirping birds and the rustling leaves to keep me company. It seemed like nothing could ruin this moment of tranquility. My friend Walter Johnson, a seasoned hunter, had come up to visit me for a few days in my cabin. We'd made plans to explore the dense forest that surrounded my property during his stay. While enjoying our morning cuppa, we couldn't help but overhear a conversation on the radio about a recent surge in bear sightings near our location. Hey, did you hear about that rogue grizzly that's been terrorizing nearby cabins? Walter asked with a hint of worry in his voice. Yeah, I did, I replied, frowning slightly at the thought. Keep an eye out when we're out exploring and remember to always carry some kind of protection. I motioned toward the hunting rifle leaning against the wall. The first day in the woods was calm and relaxing, just what I needed after weeks of stressful work-related meetings. We ventured deeper into the forest than ever before, setting up camp and roasting freshly caught fish over an open fire. The next day began with exploration and mapping out new trails for future hikes. As we trekked through the dense foliage, we encountered something unsettling, a scene of destruction unlike anything either of us had ever seen before. A small clearing housed scattered remnants of what could have been a tent site. Firewood split in half as if torn apart by ludicrous strength and blood splatters surrounding the area. The hell you think happened here? I asked Walter, my voice shaking despite my best efforts to sound unfazed. Walter swallowed hard. I don't know but we need to make sure we're well-armed and cautious during our time here. Something out there did this, and I don't want to have a face-to-face -face encounter. That night we slept uneasily, tensions high and minds plagued by the thought of what could be lurking in the darkness. The gentle rustling of leaves barely masked the sound of something heavy-paced moving in the underbrush. I jolted awake to Walter shaking my arm violently, a fierce look in his eyes as he pressed a finger to his lips. Before I could ask what was going on, he pulled me down behind a fallen tree trunk, gripping his rifle tightly. 
I watched in utter terror as a hulking silhouette emerged from the darkness, stalking slowly towards us. I couldn't make out any distinct features through the darkness except for two blood-red eyes staring right at us. I thought grizzlies were supposed to hibernate this time of year, I whispered urgently to Walter. This, this isn't a grizzly, he stammered. Whatever it is, we need to move quickly. Now! As we stumbled and crawled through underbrush trying to escape, the beast let out a gut-wrenching roar that shook the very foundations of our souls. Heavy, thudding footsteps rapidly approached from behind us as we raced towards our campsite, only to find it utterly decimated much like the tent site we'd discovered earlier. Walter grabbed my arm. We have no choice now. We have to make it back to your cabin, he urged, desperation growing more evident in his voice. We bolted through the dense forest, trying our best to stay quiet, heading towards my cabin. But that creature, whatever it was, refused to let us go that easily. It seemingly leaped through the trees, the thuds of its powerful limbs hitting the ground echoing while its deep growls vibrated the air. At one point, my foot snagged on a tree root and I fell hard, scraping my face against the leaf-covered ground. Walter helped me up quickly and we continued running, our lungs burning and legs aching. My cabin finally appeared in front of us. An eerie mix of solace and potential doom awaited us inside. We forced open the door and jumped in just as the creature locked its gaze on us. Frantically, I locked all the doors and windows. Damn it, we need to call for help, Walter exclaimed. I tried dialing 911 on my phone, no signal. There's no reception here, I said weakly as we huddled down in a corner of the cabin. We stared at each other in fear, our once safe haven now feeling like a trapped waiting room for our inevitable fate. The creature approached slowly at first, then charged into the cabin door with ferocious strength. The thick wooden structure began to crack under its relentless onslaught. Despite knowing we couldn't fight back nor investigate what this monster was, the thought of not having help sent a fresh wave of panic coursing through us. The decision behind not reaching out earlier lingered heavily among our regrets. Walter reached into his bag and pulled out flares typically used to signal for help during hunting trips or emergencies. Maybe if we shoot these off outside, someone might see them. There was no time for second thoughts. Every option available was being snatched from our clutches in those desperate moments. Walter cracked open the window enough to shoot a flare into the night sky. The sudden flash of light threw the monster back momentarily. In that brief moment, we caught our breaths. The creature returned to its stalking stance, revealing the dark bristles on top of powerful muscles on its legs and back its snout large and dripping with saliva as its red eyes never left us. It resembled a twisted hybrid of a wolf and bear with abnormally large claws that could tear an animal or human in seconds. The sight of it seared into our memories. With no help in sight, we hesitated between staying at the cabin and attempting another desperate escape. As we deliberated, shaking with fear, the creature smashed through one of the windows, lunging for Walter. We split up instinctually. Walter ran upstairs while I retreated to the basement. I heard screams from above as floorboards creaked under storming weight. Then silence fell, leaving me trembling in despair. The basement door burst open, revealing the creature with streaks of blood staining its fur. Thoughtlessly, I picked up a canister of gasoline used for emergencies and doused the walls then lit them with a match just as the beast approached me. Flames engulfed us both as the cabin turned into an inferno. Miraculously, through searing pain, I managed to crawl out from beneath airborne debris choking on smoke and soot. I lay there outside my burning cabin where Walter's hopeless end took place, and my world had crumbled to ashes. Friendly voices called out to me after spotting my initial flare, but it was too late for us. Looking back at that horrific night, images of that monstrous creature still haunt me relentlessly. Together, with Walter's memory and his gut-wrenching final moments while awaiting rescue side by side, it all became ingrained in my heart like scars carved upon flesh. Our encounter with that beast proved how life stands a fragile commodity when faced with primal rage from a creature straight out of elusive folklore. So there I was just minding my business on an average day, trying to enjoy my hike through the Alaskan wilderness, when something happened that I never thought would change my life forever. My name is Rick Martinson, 
and for the most part, I'm just your average guy with an office job and a house in the suburbs. But sometimes I like to escape the daily grind by going on adventures in the great outdoors. It was late afternoon when I first noticed it, a putrid smell unlike anything else, a mix of sulfur and rotten eggs. It was so powerful that it made my eyes water and I almost gagged from the overpowering stench. At first I thought it might just be a simple odor coming from some sort of decomposing plant or algae in the nearby wetlands, but boy, was I wrong. I continued on my hike, trying my best to ignore the smell, when suddenly I found myself standing at the edge of a clearing in the forest. In the center were two local men sprawled out on the ground. Their bodies were twisted in unnatural positions, covered in horrific slashes and bite marks. There was an eerie quietness hanging over the scene, as if the forest itself held its breath. Panicking and horrified out of my mind, I scrambled as quickly as possible back to town, wanting nothing more than to report these dreadful occurrences to local authorities. After gaining some composure, I approached three officers huddled together near their patrol cars and told them everything I had stumbled upon. They exchanged concerned glances before agreeing to accompany me back into the woods so they could evaluate this puzzling situation for themselves. As we trekked deeper into the trees towards where these grisly discoveries lay waiting for us to return, one officer commented sardonically about a curse supposedly tied to those haunted woods. Another chuckled quietly, clearly believing rumors of curses were something that ought to be laughed at amongst rational adults. It must have been only a few minutes after we stumbled upon the gruesome scene again when it struck. All at once officers began shouting for us to take cover, but we didn't understand what was happening. We could hear what sounded like ominous animal snarls piercing through the eerie stillness of the forest. Suddenly, a massive figure jumped down from among the tree branches, landing just a few feet away from us. It towered overhead, its muscular body lining up with gnarled tree trunks effortlessly. Looming over all of us, this creature seemed unbelievably conniving and primal in the dim twilight that was falling around us. In all my wildest dreams and most terrifying nightmares, I could never have imagined seeing something like this in real life. Tangled hair covered its hideous face while razor-sharp claws dripped crimson droplets against the ground and sharp fangs snarled with an unfathomable lust for blood. One courageous officer managed to unsling his shotgun and shoot at the monster, but it barely flinched, leaping forward and striking him with horrifying precision. The gut-wrenching sound of his neck snapping echoed all around us. I will never forget it. I couldn't think, couldn't breathe. The only thought racing through my mind was to escape. <laughs> the remaining officers and I bolted in different directions, each of us trying to distance ourselves from the horrifying creature. Panting heavily, I pushed my body to its limits while running deeper into the forest. In my panic, calling for help slipped my mind. I knew I must survive long enough to do so. The beast did not hesitate to give chase. The sounds of crunching wood and snapping branches behind me made it painfully clear that it pursued with relentless intent. As I stumbled, struggling to keep up with my own racing heart, one of the officers had circled back and found his way near me. Keep moving, he shouted in desperation. We picked up the pace together, knowing full well that stopping meant death. Calling for help was impossible. Our radios crackled with static interference deep in the woods. We had no choice but to run and hope for an escape. As we sprinted together through the darkness, I caught a glimpse of something large slither among the trees. Another horrific creature joined the pursuit. Realizing we were outnumbered and outmatched, the officer made a bold decision. Split up. Maybe one of us will make it out. We separated without further discussion. Each step felt like an eternity as I pushed on alone through the dense forest, praying I would make it out alive. Exhaustion took its toll. Every breath seared my lungs like fire while my thoughts raced between hope and despair. Eventually, I stumbled upon a clearing amidst the tangled wood. Our town's very own search and rescue team flooded the area. Relief surged through my body as they spotted me and rushed in haste towards me. Before collapsing from fatigue, I managed to gasp out a frantic warning about the creatures still stalking within those woods. With their help, we organized search parties for the missing officers. The days following were filled with anxiety as teams hesitantly ventured into the forest, curious yet terrified to know the truth of the monstrous beings lurking behind the trees. As for me, I was left to mend my body and mind after that harrowing experience. I could still feel the presence of those creatures whenever I closed my eyes, 
their twisted forms and bloodthirsty grins haunting my dreams. The search parties eventually returned, having located the remains of two officers yet finding no trace of the creatures we encountered. The community mourned their loss, struggling to comprehend what had truly occurred deep within those accursed woods. Speculation flourished about what could have ravaged our once peaceful land with terror. Outcasts seeking revenge on society, perhaps, or something darker dredged from our nightmares. All of us struggled not just to make sense of our situation, but also how to protect ourselves from returning face to face with these monstrous entities that managed to evade investigation and capture. No one who witnessed those events would ever forget it. The chilling encounters remained only whispers within our small town. A dark secret meant never to be shared with those beyond our borders. It was as if speaking about the horror would somehow will it back into existence. We couldn't bear that risk. The brutal deaths of those who served for our protection marked a turning point. We knew something unknown and terrifying resided in that cursed forest. Stalking, waiting, for those who dared venture too far. It was a sweltering afternoon in the secluded forests of Alaska, and I found myself regretting my decision to accept the bet from my colleagues. The wager was simple. If I could spend an entire weekend camping alone in these creepy woods, they would treat me to dinner at the most expensive restaurant in town for an entire month. It seemed like an easy way to score some free gourmet meals, but as I fought with the tense assembly instructions, doubt gnawed at me. The singularity of the trees crowding around me was unnerving, they stood silently as though they were a pack of predators waiting to pounce. The faint sound of twigs snapping caught my attention, bringing with it the unsettling possibility that I might not be alone. First, it was a smattering of bones strewn across the forest floor, as if someone had cleared out an anatomy lab and dumped its contents randomly. Crackles of laughter echoed through the forest, getting louder and more intense as darkness started to fall. I shook my head attempting to shake off the uneasiness that had settled on me like a heavy fog. This must be dehydration, I mumbled under my breath, forcing myself to swallow gulps of lukewarm water from my canteen. It felt like sludge when it reached my unsettled stomach. As night took its time to dominate the sky, I lit a fire, more for comfort than warmth, and cooked dinner over its flames. The persistent crackling left little room for musings about what exactly that disembodied laughter had been. Over supper, I reminisced about the grueling week I'd just endured at work. My friend Kenji Roberts had been regaling everyone in our otherwise boring office job with his story about how he convinced his wife he was secretly a superhero, moonlighting as an insurance salesperson. It made us all laugh hard enough we nearly choked on our coffee. An unsettling silence enveloped me smothering the giggle that escaped my lips at the memory. The lingering echoes of that mysterious laughter still burned in my eardrums, its intensity so frightening, it threatened to split my skull. I shrugged off my weariness and decided to shore up my psyche with hot chocolate. As I stirred the water in the pot, its magical aroma began to waft around me. As soothing as that warm and bittersweet cocoa was, it couldn't hold a candle to the petrifying screech that erupted without warning from somewhere within those impenetrable woods. It drowned out the sickly sweet chorus of crickets, replacing their gentle hum with a cacophony sharp enough to shred through skin. I whipped around, eyes scanning wildly for any sign of its source. Fear tightened its vice-like grip on me, but my instincts helped me shove it aside long enough so I could stumble through the dark, away from whatever sinister creature plagued this treacherous campsite. My steps grew quicker as adrenaline pumped through my veins like liquid fire. The feeling of eyes watching me intensified with each labored breath. Out of nowhere, a monstrous figure erupted from the underbrush next to me. All elongated limbs topped with dangerously sharp claws as if torn straight from nightmares about werewolves or wendigos. My blood ran cold as I looked into those dead black eyes. Windows into not a soul, but an abyss. My heart raced in my chest as I stumbled further into the underbrush, trying desperately to escape the terrifying creature that pursued me. I could hear it crashing through the foliage behind me, its heavy breathing and guttural growls growing ever louder. Why am I not calling for help? I thought, realizing the absurdity of my silence. 
After frantically considering my options, I realized I was far too deep into the woods for anyone to hear me scream. My legs propelled me forward as branches whipped against my face and tore at my clothing. Finally, I could not take another gasp of panicked breath as the deafening thud of the creature's footsteps ceased. Bolstered by courage, I turned to face what hunted me this entire time. The enormous beast loomed closer now, a grotesque combination of man and wolf. Dark fur covered its muscular body as it stood on two powerful hind legs, similar to those of a dog, yet twisted and malformed. Its lengthy arms ended in gnarled hands with extended fingers tipped with razor-sharp claws. A gash of a mouth spread across its face, full of jagged teeth that must have been capable of shredding flesh with ease. I backed away from it in terror and tripped on an unseen root, sending me onto my back with a sharp exhalation. It took advantage of my vulnerability, closing the distance between us in an unnatural bound that ended mere feet away from me. Digging my heels into the soft earth beneath me, I tried to scramble away, but its massive form fell atop mine, pinning me down with unrelenting force. The foul stench from its breath felt like a nauseating assault on every sense as it opened its jaws wide to strike. In that horrifying instant, a branch snapped nearby, catching both our attention. Another monstrous figure appeared from the darkness, similar in appearance but larger and more intimidating still. They regarded each other for a moment, sizing each other up before launching into a vicious battle. Their conflict was vicious and swift as they clawed and tore at one another in a whirlwind of fur and blood. The distraction allowed me the chance to crawl away from the carnage before carefully rising to my feet, using every ounce of strength I had left to make my way back to camp. As I ran, the sounds of their terrible struggle continued to ring out through the night air. When I finally reached the clearing where my camp had been set up earlier that night, I stumbled across a fellow camper who had been passing by. He called out upon seeing my disheveled state and hurried over to make sure I was all right. He listened intently as I recounted the harrowing events that had just unfolded, then offered his help and suggested we both make our way back to civilization immediately. We safely reached the campsite together, left our remaining belongings behind and hastily returned to town. Informing others of my encounter with those nightmare creatures felt bittersweet. There was relief in letting people know what had happened but little could be done about what lived within those woods. Some days later, I received word that Kenji Roberts had disappeared while on an impromptu camping trip at the same site. The news weighed heavily upon me. If only I'd been able to warn him beforehand or stop him from venturing into those woods alone. As much as I wanted to save him too, I couldn't help but remember the overwhelming fear that held me captive during my own experience and how lucky I was to have escaped. From that fateful evening onward, I vowed never again to venture near those sinister woods, fearing not only for my safety but for those whom the horrifying creatures lurking within continued to prey upon. A thick fog hung low in the air on that fateful day as I made my way towards my destination in a dense forest near Anchorage, Alaska. My name is Benjamin Walters and I was there for what was supposed to be a quick weekend trip to visit my dear friend and fellow outdoors enthusiast, Jasper Thompson. We planned to hike and camp in the woods, enjoying the serene landscape Alaska had to offer. Upon reaching the trailhead where we agreed to meet, Jasper came out of my old truck with his furry companion, Bear, an enormous Alaskan Malamute that always kept us company during our trips. As we started on our trek, Bear sniffed around curiously, investigating every nook and cranny of our surroundings. Hey Ben, come take a look at this, Jasper called out from a few feet ahead of me on the trail. Curious about what he had found, I made my way over and was shocked at the sight before me. There were deep scratches etched into several trees nearby. Claw marks? What kind of animal could have done such damage? That's quite unsettling, I muttered under my breath. Even Bear seemed concerned by our discovery. We continued down the winding path through the trees, occasionally exchanging humorous remarks to break the eerie silence that enveloped us. We proceeded with caution, sensing an unusual tension in the environment. Well, there's definitely woodpeckers out here, Jasper joked as we passed a tree riddled with peck marks on its trunk. I wonder if they can puncture tires too, I quipped back. 
Our laughter momentarily drowned out the otherwise unsettling atmosphere of our surroundings. Suddenly we noticed something blocking our path ahead, a large boulder sitting in the middle of the trail as if it had been placed there intentionally. Intrigued by its precision placement, we drew closer and discovered what seemed like scratches and dried blood smeared across it. The marks looked fresh, and before we could speak, Bear began to growl deeply, staring past the boulder as if reacting to a hidden presence. Jasper, do you see that? I whispered nervously as my eyes strained to catch a glimpse of something lurking in the fog beyond the boulder. Shadows shifted and took shape for a brief moment, unveiling what appeared to be an imposing figure with features too obscure to discern clearly. As soon as it had appeared, the figure vanished into the mist once again. It was then that we heard a gut-wrenching scream echoing through the forest, desperate, fearful cries of help. Panic sinking in, Jasper and I exchanged worried glances before sprinting toward the sound with Bear bounding in front of us. The fog began to thicken around us, making it increasingly difficult to navigate, but we pressed on, driven by adrenaline and concern for those in distress. Finally reaching a small clearing just up ahead, we discovered the source of the cries, a hiker named Rachel Perkins. She was lying on the ground, her leg ensnared in a bear trap now stained with blood. We quickly worked together to free her from its grip while she tearfully retold her encounter with an unsettlingly large creature that had been stalking her for most of her hike. I saw its eyes, she sobbed in between gasps for breath. They were like fiery coals burning through my soul. We reassured Rachel that we'd help her find safety as we crafted a makeshift splint from nearby branches and assisted her back down the trail toward civilization. As we carried her along the path with Bear remaining vigilant at our side, we couldn't shake the feeling that those fiery eyes were still watching us from within the fog surrounding our every move. As we continued down the trail, Rachel's breathing grew more labored, her eyes filled with terror. We need to get out of here, she whispered, looking back at the fog, which seemed to be advancing towards us like a sentient being. Bear whimpered and stayed close to us, his hackles raised. The forest became eerily silent. All the natural sounds of birds and insects had vanished, leaving only our footsteps and the sound of Rachel's ragged breathing. I could sense that something was wrong, but couldn't place my finger on it. It was as if we were entirely alone in this world, just the four of us. We decided to call for help soon, but soon realized we had forgotten our phones back at camp, probably because of the initial chaos and fear. We resumed our hurried pace, all too aware of the likelihood that whatever attacked Rachel was still out there, stalking us. Our gazes shifted throughout the murky landscape and muscles tensed, anticipating danger. Suddenly a low, guttural growl reverberated through the air, chilling our bones. We froze in place as an enormous creature emerged from the fog and leaped towards us with lightning speed. Its size was unimaginable its hide covered in thick black fur that clung onto its body like tar. Two monstrous horns protruded from its glowing head while steam blew fiercely from its snout. In a moment of heightened panic, Jasper yelled for me to run with Rachel, assuring he'd distract it as long as he could. I hesitated but complied when Bear lunged at the creature alongside Jasper. My heart pounded in my chest as I helped Rachel along. The creature's roars were accompanied by sounds of bear's barks and Jasper's shouts echoing through the night. The assault was relentless but seemingly without pain appearing on any party involved. Then suddenly, sounds of struggle ceased leaving nothing but an eerie quiet, the calm before the storm. I could barely catch my breath when suddenly, a man emerged from a nearby bush. He was clad in dark clothing and introduced himself as Officer Reynolds, part of a search and rescue team that had heard the commotion. Rachel and I let out a sigh of relief and explained our situation to him. As Reynolds radioed for backup and medical assistance, we kept a watchful eye on the fog as it continued to encroach closer. Soon, we could hear the sound of help approaching, sirens and vehicles crunching over gravel. Officer Reynolds guided us towards the rescue crew while keeping his weapon at the ready. As we got nearer to safety, Violet, another member of the search and rescue team, shook her head in disbelief at the sight of Rachel's wound. "'You're lucky to be alive,' she said solemnly as she tended to Rachel's leg. Once we reached their makeshift command center adorned with concerned officers and paramedics, I noticed Bear whimpering by my side, covered in dirt and blood. 
A medic checked him over but explained that he had escaped without significant injuries. Bravery filled Jasper's voice as he finally emerged from the fog, leaning on a rescue worker for support, covered in cuts, bruises, and blood, but other than that, seemingly unharmed. He locked eyes with me for just one moment before collapsing into exhaustion on one of the stretchers. In the days that followed our harrowing ordeal in that fog-ridden forest, authorities investigated our attacker but found no trace. The mangled bear trap proved inconclusive. Whatever attacked us seemed untraceable by normal means. The incident triggered debates among people on what exactly resided in those woods. Some insisted that it was an undiscovered species. Others believed it was a local legend come to life, a terrifyingly huge animal said to haunt those parts since long ago. The only thing certain in our minds was the fear we experienced and the unexplainable events that transpired that day. We never ventured back into that forest, and our little group, consisting of myself, Jasper, Rachel, and Bear, became a support system in mending the emotional trauma in spite of not grasping what had struck us. Together we honor the survivors like ourselves, those who have braved through treacherous ordeals and made it out alive. The memory of that terrifying night has brought us closer as friends and as witnesses to something that, whether paranormal or natural, remains unexplained. My world had changed ever since I moved to Alaska for a fresh start. The beauty of the wild was both breathtaking and thrilling, but it was not always pleasant, particularly during my regular treks through the dense forest in search of more trees, a favorite pastime to keep me motivated and connected with nature. One day, while I continued on my usual route, I came across something that shook me to my core. I walked through the forest with my trusty axe strapped to my back and whistling a tune to myself when I heard a sharp crack echo through the trees. My first instinct was that it must have been ice breaking or a tree falling, as I quickly glanced left and right, trying to measure the distance and direction of the sound. To my growing horror, I registered the shape of a human arm lying in a patch of snow ahead of me. A million thoughts raced through my head, and I contemplated calling for help, but my cell phone service was non-existent out here, typical Alaska. My heart pounded rapidly as I approached with caution and tried to joke about the situation in an attempt to alleviate the tension building within me. Hey there, buddy, I said nervously. Seems like you've lost your touch. As I got closer to the severed limb, I noticed blackish purple marks encircling what remained of its shoulder. It looked like something powerful and monstrous had ripped it from its body, like some enormous jaws had clenched down like those of a massive bear, or worse. Suddenly all humor dissipated replaced by morbid curiosity and deep trepidation. But there was no option other than continuing forward until help could be reached or the threat eliminated. As the trail wound deeper into uncharted territory, more signs of violence emerged. Scraps of fabric caught on sharp branches, blood-stained leaves, an ominous skittering sound that seemed always just out of sight. As the sun dipped low in the sky, bathing the forest in twilight hues, I came upon an eerie clearing, Kneeling before a makeshift shrine was a figure, hunched over and seemingly in prayer. The shriek of terror that lodged in my throat at this damning sight simply refused to leave, though my legs somehow managed to plant themselves firmly on the ground. I cautiously stepped forward, hand hovering over my holstered pistol. The guttural chanting of the figure seemed to grow in intensity as it stretched long, gnarled fingers towards a blood-stained effigy at the center of the shrine. With each passing syllable, its unearthly form seemed to take on some horrific new aspect. Gathering my courage, I called out loudly, Hey! Hoping for any reasonable explanation for these gruesome crimes against humanity. Immediately, the chanting ceased as the figure jerked upright and locked eyes with me. Its visage was twisted by shadows and impossible to discern clearly. But what could be seen was beyond human. A sinister creature wearing human skin like a tattered cloak, and horns protruding from its head like twisted branches or roots. In that moment, it became clear that my only option was to escape this nightmarish scene. Despite my instinct screaming at me to turn and run, I somehow managed to take another step back, slowly putting distance between myself and the creature. It stared at me with unrelenting intensity, its terrible gaze piercing straight through me. 
There was no shred of humanity left in those eyes. The phone in my pocket felt like a burning temptation, but I knew that calling for help would lead to questions I had no answers for, not to mention potentially endangering whoever might answer my call. Moreover, something told me that the time it would take for help to arrive would be too long. The momentary distraction could give the creature an opportunity to strike. Inching back one step at a time, I reached the edge of the clearing where the forest had grown dense once more. Then, without any warning, the creature lunged towards me with surprising agility. I swallowed my terror and bolted into the woods as fast as my legs would carry me. The haunting noise of creatures pursuing echoed throughout the forest behind me. All I could think about was surviving and escaping this unimaginable nightmare. As I weaved through labyrinthine pathways and stumbled over jagged roots and rocks, panic flooded every inch of my body. My mind raced with thoughts about friends and family. A desperate plea for their forgiveness for not being there when they needed me was all I could muster. The terror propelled me forward despite my legs threatening to give out on me. I heard a sickening thud and scream from behind. I dared not look back fearing what terrifying scene may greet my eyes. When it seemed like my heart would burst from my chest, I suddenly spotted a cabin just up ahead. Bursting through its door and slamming it shut behind me, I frantically searched for something, anything, that could fend off this relentless pursuit. The only defense I could find were old rusty nails and a wooden plank. A pitiful defense against the horrors outside, but enough to delay them from reaching me. The creature slammed into the door like a battering ram while I feverishly tried to nail the plank into place. Agonizing screams echoed through the cabin while a cacophony of rage emanated from the creature and its pack. As night turned to day, the dreadful noises subsided, replaced by eerie silence. All that remained was the sound of my own labored breaths. Waiting anxiously for what felt like an eternity, I finally decided it was safe to leave my hiding spot. Hesitantly, I removed the makeshift barricade from the door and cautiously stepped outside, prepared for any signs of danger. The landscape seemed untouched by my ordeal, if not for bloodstains scattered around and severed limbs that lay nearby. I began to make my way back toward civilization, holding on to hope that what I had just experienced would not torment me any further. Pray as I might, I could never forget the victims left in the wake of this ghastly creature faceless strangers whose lives had been violently snuffed out by a monster straight out of a nightmare. Determined to survive this encounter and warn others about what lurked in those dark woods, I pressed forward on trembling legs. No horror or story about existing folklore could ever compare to the sheer terror and gruesomeness that I had witnessed firsthand, an unimaginable hell hidden away in uncharted depths of Alaska. It was an unusually hectic month at work, and I desperately needed a break. My colleague, Alex Montgomery, suggested we take a weekend trip to explore the remote wooded area near Coldfoot Camp in Alaska. He had heard fascinating stories of the region's beauty and serenity. We were up for an adventure, and this opportunity seemed perfect. We packed our bags and set off on a Friday afternoon, driving through the breathtaking Alaskan landscape for hours, making occasional stops to admire the view and refuel our bodies. As we continued deeper into the forested area, our cell service waned, as did our connection to the outside world. We found it exciting yet nerve-wracking as we pushed further into isolation. Late in the evening, we finally reached a cozy cabin that we had rented for a couple of nights. Nestled in thick foliage, it appeared to be untouched by humankind for ages. Surprisingly well-maintained on the inside, we lit a fire in the hearth and made ourselves comfortable. After dinner, Alex laughingly reminisced about horror movies set in cabins in the woods, while jokingly recounting bits of folklore from this part of Alaska. I rolled my eyes and chuckled along with him as we shared stories late into the night. We woke up early to catch some glimpses of wildlife and headed out on a hike through the dense vegetation that seemed to stretch on forever. Breathless from climbing hills and crossing streams, we caught sight of an old logging road that seemed oddly out of place within this otherwise pristine wilderness. As intrigued as ever by anything unusual, Alex led us off our planned path to follow the faint trail. The day grew colder as clouds began casting shadows across sunlight. It wasn't long before fog rolled in unexpectedly. Occasionally stumbled upon abandoned machinery covered in rust and moss. 
now unrecognizable remnants further heightened our curiosity. The sound of footsteps slowly crunching behind us made both our hearts skip a beat. Glancing back, we caught sight of a disfigured-looking figure, barely visible through the fog. We instinctively started to move quickly, our pace increasing as the sound seemed to draw closer. Panic gripped us tightly as we found ourselves lost amidst the seemingly unending trees with this mysterious pursuer. A loud crack suddenly reverberated through the air, causing us to stop in our tracks. We turned to see a gargantuan tree that had fallen, revealing the source of our fear. An oddly malformed bear-like creature that appeared disoriented by the tree's sudden collapse. It didn't have any discernible features other than its incredibly large size and sharp claws. Terrified, we steeled ourselves and cautiously moved forward. I couldn't help but feel pity for the creature that seemed just as frightened by this situation as we were. But our empathy turned to horror when it spotted us once again and bellowed angrily, saliva dripping from its gnarled maw while gore encrusted its teeth. We sprinted away, adrenaline coursing through our veins, as we tried to outpace the enraged beast that chased after us with ferocious intent. We knew that if it caught us, it would be much more than a simple mauling or injury we'd face. Desperate, I shouted over my shoulder at Alex to split up and meet back at the cabin if we survived, hoping beyond hope that dividing ourselves would confuse the rampaging monster and buy us enough time for an escape. We made our way through thick underbrush and treacherous terrain, each breath feeling like razor blades grated against our throats with weary muscles pushed to their limit by exertion from evading near certain tragedy. As we split up, I noticed a small clearing ahead which might buy me some time to regroup. I dashed into the middle of it, knowing full well that it wasn't exactly a safe hiding spot. Regardless, taking refuge in an open area gave me the slightest chance in case I needed to escape again. I heard a scream. It was Alex. The sound tore at my heart but I knew there was nothing I could do for him now. Our best chance was still to divide and conquer, and I needed to keep running and find help. I reached the edge of the woods when my foot caught on a root, sending me tumbling into the dirt. My knee throbbed with pain, forcing me to acknowledge that I couldn't outrun this creature any longer. The bear-like monster bounded closer, intent on finishing what it started. Desperate for any way out, I remembered the abandoned machinery we'd found earlier and limped toward the remnants of rusted metal lying nearby. My face contorted in shock at the realization that some of these machines looked like crude bear traps. Panicking earlier, I hadn't noticed their lethal purpose. Whether placed there by hunters or poachers, they might be my only shot at stopping this beast. I quickly turned one of them upright, positioning it between me and the advancing horror. The creature halted sensing something was amiss as its gaze locked onto the trap. Snarling with rage, it skirted around it instead of lunging at me. Hope surged through me. Maybe these traps could indeed slow it down enough for me to escape to safety. I hobbled away from our confrontation as fast as my injured leg would allow, until finally, miraculously, spotting our cabin through a break in the trees. Grateful tears welled up in my eyes as the heavy door creaked open, relief momentarily overriding my pain. I inspected my gnarled knee and noticed how my crash had impacted my mobility. I realized in that instant that calling for help was futile. It would come too late if it came at all. We were too far away from civilization, and nobody would find us until the weekend. The creature's howl rang out, chilling me to the bone. I knew that the traps alone wouldn't be enough to stop it. The enormous beast would soon realize it couldn't get past them and likely return with a vengeance. I had no choice but to barricade myself in the cabin and hope against hope that the creature would eventually give up its pursuit. Hours passed, feeling like days. I had hobbled around the cabin searching for anything that might help me in my defense against this relentless pursuer. As darkness fell upon the land outside, I found a rifle tucked away behind a dusty cabinet. Grasping the firearm with trembling hands, I muttered silent apologies to Alex's memory for not being there in time, and promised myself never to let anyone else down like this again. I waited in the darkness of our desolate home with my heart pounding in my ears, praying fervently for rescue or reprieve. I knew deep down neither were likely to arrive before dawn broke over the woods. As morning light crept through the narrow slits between the barricaded door and windows, there was no sign of the monstrous creature. While I dared not hope it had given up its pursuit, at least there was some breathing room for now. 
Tears streaked my dirty face as memories of Alex flooded my mind. All those talks shared under stars during our hikes and car rides exploring new places. Just then, the sound of distant sirens soared into silence. Perhaps our desperate cries had been heard after all. As relief mingled with grief in my heart, so too did raw determination come with newfound gratitude for whatever life still remained amid the shadows. My shift at the local sawmill had just ended, and I was headed home when something caught my attention. I'd been trying to quit smoking for a while now, but life's stresses combined with the sheer repetitive monotony of my job had me reaching for a pack more often than I'd care to admit. As I struck a match to light up, a sudden gust of wind extinguished it, and just as suddenly, a pungent odor filled the air. It smells like someone forgot to take out their trash, a colleague Brad Jefferson remarked as he walked alongside me. We both made our way through the dirt path leading out of the sawmill, surrounded by the dense Alaskan forest. Twisted shrubs and branches seemed to reach out and scratch at our legs as we passed. I can't believe we live right downwind from that place, another worker chimed in. His name was Eric Michaels, and he was relatively new in town. What kind of idiot dumps chemicals in a ditch near homes? My grandma always said people didn't have sense back then, replied Brad with a hearty laugh, lifting some tension off of our shoulders. As much as Grandma Monahan loved her ghost stories about this part of Alaska, it all seemed like innocent folklore, until now. We later found out from an offhand comment made by Sheriff Thompson that some ancient sewer system had been damaged during renovation works nearby. The smell was probably from stagnant water and waste rotting away beneath us. Unremarkable small-town issues you get every day around here. Days went by as usual until one fateful evening after work when Brad suddenly stopped mid-conversation. Our eyes followed his finger toward a mutilated deer tied up in knots around a tree trunk, a sight so gruesome and inexplicable that all three of us stopped dead in our tracks. Guys, let's hurry home, Eric whispered, glancing in every direction. Who knows what's out there? People might be getting mugged or worse. We didn't need any more encouragement. Keeping our pace brisk, we walked the remaining distance to our respective houses under a cloud of apprehension. A week had passed since our encounter with the mutilated deer. The whole town had been gripped by unease since then, and I was no exception. This time, however, I felt it wise to tell my buddies about the extra precautions I'd been taking. I got my hands on a shotgun, I whispered to Brad and Eric during our lunch break. I'm pretty sure it's illegal here in Alaska without a proper license, but better safe than sorry, right? Good call, said Eric, nodding vigorously. I picked up some pepper spray just in case. His words were interrupted by the shrill call of an emergency siren cutting through the air. We looked around as everyone froze in their places, instinctively knowing that something was horribly wrong. The speakers crackled to life, Sheriff Thompson's voice clear but strained. Attention all residents. Lock your doors and stay inside. Multiple attacks reported. Unknown predator. Extremely dangerous. Our blood turned cold. After exchanging glances of sheer terror, we sprinted from work towards our homes, desperate to ensure the safety of our families. As weeks turned into months, people began going missing. Locals at first, then tourists too. The whole town was blanketed in fear as it seemed no place was safe anymore. The once welcoming forest now sheltered an unseen menace, a creature more than capable of overpowering every single person who ventured within its domain. One night, as Brad and I locked up the sawmill for the evening, we heard soft, rhythmic tapping on glass that sent shivers down our spines. On high alert, we scanned our surroundings with false bravado, relying only on the dim streetlights casting eerie shadows. We saw it, the thing responsible for our town's terror, crouched amongst the trees with twisted limbs that seemed to defy human anatomy. Run! I screamed at Brad while fumbling for my shotgun. Adrenaline surged through our veins as we sprinted toward our homes, desperate to put as much distance between us and that monstrosity as possible. The fiend was gaining on us, its heavy breathing growing louder with each horrifying moment. We turned a corner and I managed to fire a shot at the creature, but it barely flinched. We kept running, our breaths ragged as we finally reached our respective houses. I burst through the door, not even bothering to lock it behind me before sprinting to ensure my family was safe. 
my wife and children huddled in the living room, having heard the sirens and gunshots outside. Without wasting a second, I moved them all into the basement and locked the door. As we huddled together in silence, we could hear heavy footsteps seemingly circling above us. They persisted throughout the entire night. The next morning, we emerged from the basement only after being sure that the noises had stopped. We contacted Eric and Brad. Thankfully, they were okay as well. We decided to call for reinforcements as there was no way we could handle this thing ourselves. Brad called his cousin who worked for a private security firm in Anchorage. Within hours, they arrived at our town and went straight to work. Despite having numerous weapons and manpower at their disposal, they didn't seem able to make a dent in this monster's attacks. We learned of a tracker by the name of James Rogers who specialized in hunting dangerous creatures. With no other option left, we called him for help. However, he never made it into town, found torn apart near his vehicle on an isolated back road. The creature's attacks continued mercilessly, victims piling up each night. This was no longer about saving ourselves. Our entire community was on the brink of destruction. One evening, Brad received a call from his uncle Harold, who lived just outside of town. He claimed to have trapped the creature in his barn but couldn't kill it. Apparently, he'd tried multiple times already but couldn't deliver a fatal blow. He needed us to bring heavier firearms and ammunition. We hesitantly agreed. Brad, Eric, and I made our way to Harold's house. Our intense fear mixed with resolve as we prepared ourselves for what might be our final stand. Upon arriving at the barn, we found the creature restrained with chains and lengths of cable, growling and snarling as it tried to free itself. We couldn't let this opportunity go to waste. We unloaded our weapons into the creature, each shot causing it immense pain. In a gruesome display, the creature suddenly ripped apart its own limbs in its desperate attempt at escape. It ignored our gunfire and began charging towards us with a terrifying determination. Before we could react, it grabbed Harold and snapped his neck. Brad screamed in horror at his uncle's demise. The security team then arrived and set up an explosive trap that they promised would annihilate the creature once detonated. In a hail of gunfire from both us and the security team, we lured the monster into the trap. An ear-shattering explosion ripped through the night as we watched in shock. We tentatively approached Ground Zero to ensure that it was finally gone. All that remained were bits of unrecognizable gore scattered across the area. The aftermath continued in our town for weeks following those events, funerals held daily for those lost due to this horrible creature incursion. Brad spent most of his time grieving for his Uncle Harold, but he remained grateful that we were able to stop the murderous beast before it fully eradicated our small town. We eventually managed to piece together some semblance of normalcy despite everything that had happened. However, there is not a single day that goes by without me fearing that something else just like that monster may one day return. And next time, who knows if we'd survive. From then on, Alaska's vast wilderness would never be seen the same again. Thrill-seekers ventured in, claiming they'd find evidence of such legendary creatures running rampant unchecked within its expanses. For us, however, the whole ordeal served as an unpleasant reminder of our vulnerability and how we could never truly escape what horrific dangers lurk mere moments away across those shadowy tree lines. During the early days of my career, I moved to Anchorage, Alaska to work for an oil company. The job offered a handsome pay package, and living in the lap of nature was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I rented a small cabin on the outskirts of town, surrounded by acres of dense woodland. My colleague and roommate, Nathan Brinkley, loved to spend time exploring the outdoors. One weekend, Nathan decided to go camping by a remote lake about two hours away. He invited me along with his childhood friends Gregory Benson and Laura Campbell. We loaded up our camping gear into Nathan's Jeep and left before sundown. The drive was stunning with snow-capped mountains in the background and the sun reflecting across the serene waters of Lake Aklutna. We found a great spot to pitch our tents near the lake shore and set everything up just as dusk fell. Laura lit the campfire as Gregory cracked open a beer, joking about our luck getting this perfect campsite. The air had an undeniable chill, so we huddled around the fire, passing around jokes and stories from our respective backgrounds. As we laughed together under the starry night sky, 
we felt completely at ease. After devouring some hot dogs cooked over the fire, Nathan suggested we take a walk through the seemingly enchanted forest on a winding path nearby. Illuminated by our flashlights and guided by nothing but curiosity, we wandered along slowly in a single file line, Gregory leading the way, followed by Laura, Nathan, and then me. Suddenly, Gregory froze in his tracks. Guys, do you smell that? He said with trepidation in his voice. We all took a deep breath. An overpowering stench filled our nostrils, akin to rotten meat left in a dumpster during summer heat. Unsettled but determined to explore further, we advanced deeper into the woods while discussing possible sources of the smell. Maybe a bear had killed an elk nearby. As we rounded a bend in the trail, something horrific came into view. Lying in the middle of the path was a man, or at least what used to be one. His mutilated body lay in pieces, blood and entrails scattered everywhere. We all gasped in shock and terror, unable to process the gruesome scene. Gregory turned away, retching loudly while Laura stifled a sob. Nathan clenched his jaw and grasped my shoulder. We need to get out of here now, he whispered sharply. With shaky legs, we quickly retraced our steps back to the campsite, horrified by our grisly discovery. Shoving whatever camping gear we could into our backpacks, we hastily retreated to Nathan's Jeep. As we sped off toward town, Gregory dialed 911 from his cell phone only to find there was no signal. Desperate to report our awful find and get help if needed, he continued trying every few minutes until a barely functional connection allowed him to call it in. I glanced over my shoulder and squinted into the forest. A figure stood near where our campsite once was, an amalgamation of human-like features with grotesque deformities lurking in the darkness. Its eyes seemed to bore into my very soul. Without even realizing it, I yelled over Gregory's panicked conversation with the 911 dispatcher. Drive faster! Nathan slammed his foot on the gas as I tried futilely not to think about what had just happened and that horrifying visage lurking amongst the trees. Whatever that creature was, half human or some abomination of nature, it had brutally slain its victim without remorse or consideration for any semblance of humanity. And it knew. It knew we were witnesses to its dark secret. As we tore through those winding Alaskan roads, I couldn't help but feel something dreadfully familiar about the whole situation, as if someone had turned the darkest corners of my nightmares into a horrendous reality. The jeep's engine roared like thunder beneath Nathan's foot, and I clung to my seat, my heart pounding so heavily I could feel it in my fingertips. That thing, that monster, was still out there, somewhere. We drove in silence, each of us processing the horror we had just witnessed, wishing we could erase the memory from our minds. Nathan managed to find a stronger cell signal, allowing Gregory to successfully report the grisly discovery to the authorities. His voice wavered as he relayed the gruesome scene and the monstrous figure we had glimpsed in the woods. He knew the dispatcher would have difficulty believing his account, but it mattered little. They needed to know something terrible was lurking nearby before more lives were lost. A few miles down the road, we stumbled upon a roadside motel. Exhausted and shaken, we decided that staying there for the night would be our best option until help arrived. There was no way any of us wanted to go back into that forsaken forest. At the motel, Laura and I shared a room while Nathan and Gregory took another. Our plan was to stay together for safety, strength in numbers. None of us dared to be alone after what we had seen in those haunting woods. The door to our room swung open with an ominous creak. The room itself was plain and dimly lit, but felt safer than venturing out into the uncertain darkness outside. Laura and I sat on one of the beds, struggling with what little sleep our terror-stricken minds would allow. Meanwhile, Nathan began working on a plan. He knew that when help finally arrived, we'd need a starting point or some way to track down this evil creature that lurked within those dense trees. Though none of us had ever encountered anything like it before, its very existence seemed ripped straight from the pages of mythology, a grotesque living folktale filled with malice and insatiable bloodlust. Throughout the night, we kept watch over one another, paranoid at every unexpected noise or passing shadow flitting across the walls. As dawn broke, we heard sirens approaching in the distance, 
A sense of relief washed over us, hope that perhaps somehow they could put an end to the looming terror. The police took our statements, their expressions shifting from skepticism to horror as we recounted the mangled corpse, the creature with its grotesque human-like qualities and predatory intent. They hesitated, but finally agreed to investigate. As they headed toward the woods, we couldn't help but wonder if they would return unbroken as we had, or not at all. In the days that followed, more officers delved deeper into the forest in search of the gruesome monster, each departing with grim determination, commanders and troopers alike driven by a shared goal, to eradicate this chilling threat. At last, there was a break in the case. The police had discovered a hidden lair deep within those tangled woods. Emerging from the darkness was none other than the creature we had fled from, captured and incapacitated at great cost to the brave officers who had cornered it. Its makeshift home pieced together by fate. Fearsome roots wove together like an intricate tapestry depicting a twisted narrative of death. It was over. The creature's reign of terror had come to an end, its sickening existence snuffed out by those who took a stand against its malevolence. As life resumed some semblance of normalcy, we never forgot what had transpired in that fateful Alaskan forest, nor the faces of those we left behind, or who had fallen before our very eyes. The victims remained forever etched into our minds, their screams echoing through our nightmares.